Welcome back to the Jarrett Bay Insider. I am in the bow thruster tube hole of hole 68. Today, let's take a real deep dive, come on. Here on the Jerry Bay Insider, we always wanna bring you something new and fresh, and today we're about to look at something really cool. But before we get to that, we're gonna flash back about two months and take a look at something we call the whiskey plank. Boat building is steeped in traditions and superstitions. You've probably heard of things like nailing a penny to the stem on the deadwood of an old traditional boat. You've probably heard of christening boats. There's another tradition, and it involves a piece of wood. In this case, it's a fairly small piece of wood. It might even look like a piece of scrap to you. Today's tradition is what we call the whiskey plank. I'm standing in front of Jarrett Bay Hall 68, which is our new 90 footer. And this is the whiskey plank. It is the last plank that goes on the boat. It's called the whiskey plank because, well, tradition holds that when the last plank gets put onto the vessel, everybody in the crew takes a shot of whiskey. For obvious reasons, we don't do that on the job anymore, but it is still a really big milestone in the life of a boat. The whiskey plank is sometimes confused with a specific location. That is not the case. It is just the last plank on the boat. We actually selected this location for its accessibility. Hope you enjoyed this little history lesson. Stay tuned, it will not be long before we're rolling this boat over and you don't wanna miss that. But in the meantime, if you can think of any traditions or superstitions that, that involve boating or boat building, drop them in the comments, we'd love to hear them. So it's been a couple of months since we did the whiskey plank and as you can see, the boat is fully glassed. We have the bow thruster tube hole cut. The bow thruster tube will be installed very soon, but the big news on the outside of the boat right now is the chine spray rail. The Chine spray rail has two purposes and it is made out of two different materials. Part of its purpose is aesthetic. It's sort of like eyebrows. If it was missing, you would miss it, but some parts of it don't actually do any work. And some of it does a lot of work. It, as its name infers, deflects the spray of the water as the water comes shearing down the hull and it breaks away rather than spraying up and getting the captain in the bridge wet. The spray rail is made out of two different materials as well. The foam section of the boat is really just going to be affected by the pressure of the water, and the teak section is going to be affected by the travel lift straps. Now they're about two feet wide, and there will be two big straps here, and then further back there's another section that's teak, and there will be two big straps there. There will be 200,000 pounds of boat or so being lifted. That's why we make that out of teak and then all of this gets glassed very heavily. It's a very extremely durable structure. And if you know the price of teak, you might wonder, why do we use teak under something that's gonna be fiberglassed? But if anything ever hits this and breaks the fiberglass, then that lumber gets wet. But teak has a real high oil acid content, so it has a real high decay resistance. In fact, it is considered the gold standard of decay resistance. As we come further aft, you can see the bottom of the spray rail the angle starts to change and it is actually coming to a reverse angle. It's roughly a reverse five degrees. Then as the boat is in motion, the water is rushing aft. It is also rushing up the bottom of the hull and it is hitting that chine. That chine has that reverse angle and it's just the sweet spot to generate pressure to give us uplift as the boat is running. Now let's go take a look inside the boat. So we are on the strong back in the engine room of hull 68, which is, as you can see, upside down. So in the last episode, we talked about the aluminum bed in the stringer. Well, here you can see it. It's one inch thick. This is an eight inch wide piece of aluminum. It's a pretty significant piece of structure. It's all bedded in here, and this will all eventually get wrapped in fiberglass, and you'll never see that again. Something else that's new that we've never done before in a boat this stage is glassing the inside of the hull. All of the sides and all of the tab work, all of the basically the vertical surfaces, we're gonna glass them while the boat is upside down. And something else you might have noticed is all these holes, these black holes are actually molded inserts 
that are two pieces that are glued together. And these are pass-throughs for our water lines, drain lines, power lines, and so forth. When we come back and we fiberglass over those stringers, that glass will wrap up and just barely tuck inside here. And that'll all get sanded and fared in. And the painters will make that blend into one continuous smooth passage. So what we're seeing here is our rib bands, our planking, we've talked about all that before. And this is a cabocil fillet. And that's epoxy resin, which has an orange dye in it. That's so we can tell that it's mixed at the right ratio. That fillet creates a nice rounded space so that our glass, when we lay it in there, will roll right across all those nice smooth transitions. I hope you enjoyed this episode. Stay tuned for more and we'll catch you next time. <laughs>